Hi everyone! This is the dress we'll be making. It's a nice warm winter dress to keep your little girl warm during the winter months. It has this wonderful cable knit stitch that we're going to learn how to do. It looks like knitting but it is crochet and it has a new type of flower that we're going to learn. And this is about a size 9 to 12 months. You will need a size G hook, a yarn needle, two different colors of yarn, um, this color yarn is you'll need about um, 12 ounces and then just a little bit of the other color and this is a very easy care dress but this is for more intermediate um, crocheters so come along and I'll show you how to crochet this wonderful winter dress okay to start off with you're going to be working your skirt and you're going to be working it this way so that it gets longer and longer as you work it you don't work it um, this way. So to make the stripes you will start out, um, I've made a small piece just for ease of showing you, but you will start out for this 12 month size um, doing a chain of about 46. At the end you will go in from the second chain from the hook and do 45 single crochets. For every year older I would say do 10 more chains, 10 to 15 more. So if you're making a 2T you would do about 55 to 60 chains and a 3T you would do about um, 65 to 70 chains. So at the corner chain one, turn your work, skip this first stitch at the corner and what you're doing is you're going to be taking slip stitches all the way down. So you don't yarn over or you don't have two loops on your hook, you just pull through the one loop all the way down, just like that. Now this is the only stitch I've ever done that I've had trouble making a straight edge on. Um, I'm not sure why, but I would recommend counting that you've done your full 45 slip stitches before you um, chain one and turn your work. So chain one, skip this first stitch, and go into this um, back loop right here. Let me see if I can show you. This is your slip stitches that you took which mostly just rest on the front of your work right here. So you're not touching those at all. These are the single crochets that you made. And you will be going into the back loop only of these single crochets. Let me show you one more. Just like that, all the way down. And make sure you count that you've done your 45 um, single crochets. Making that um, single crochet into the back loop only is what makes this rib stick out. So that is one rib made. And you will continue uh, making as many ribs as you want. So the next step you'll do is you will chain one again. Skip the first stitch and go right into taking your slip stitches. And then just repeat those rows that I already showed you until you have about 70 ribs made. And that's for the size um, 12 months. I made 70 ribs. So the next step is to sew um, your skirt together. Fold it in half and make sure that your right sides are together. And then you'll take your yarn needle, tie a knot right here, and you can weave those ends in later with your yarn needle. But I just tuck them in so that they don't get caught in the stitches I'm making. And then for every stitch, just go through one time. So you'll need, you'll need probably about a three or four foot length of yarn, maybe three feet. But you don't want to run out. <laughs> And it doesn't matter if you go over the top. You can do that candy cane whip stitch if you want, or you can just do the in and out stitch like this. It doesn't really matter which one. So do that all the way to the end. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to be making this block right here across the bottom of the bodice. And to do that, you'll start with a chain 33 for your foundation chain. And this is for your six month um, to newborn size. So chain 33 in your second chain from the hook, start with a single crochet. 
and take one single crochet into every stitch all the way across. So before we start, just a quick word about sizing. This is the size that I made, a 6 to 12 month size. I put 6 to 12 because everyone's child is a different size, but it's probably more like a 12 month, 9 to 12 month size. So if you want to take a screenshot of this and use it as your pattern, but keep putting it up to your child so that you can fit it right to them. When you've come to the end of your first row, this is how you will do every end so that it will stay straight. You will do a chain one, turn your work, and in your second stitch from your hook, that's where you will start your, your single crochets and that will make a nice straight edge. So continue on making rows of single crochet for 12 rows. After you've done your 12 rows, the next section you will be doing is this one right here, right below the neckline. And these are what I call decreased rows, and I'll show you how to do that. So here's your 12 rows that you've done. And instead of chaining one and skipping a space, you will just turn your work and skip a stitch with no chain one, and that will gradually um, make your line go in for your armhole. And you're going to be taking seven decreased rows and the seventh row, like I said, is this one right here. So seven total decreased rows with a decrease on every end for seven rows. And that's just minus chain one, skip a space, and that will make the incline. So after your seven rows, you will start making um, no more decreases on the end because it's going to start going straight up. But you will still be taking your um, decreased rows on the end for three rows right here. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is at the end of your seventh row. This, so you will take a chain one because you're not decreasing anymore. Skip a stitch. And go across for ten single crochets. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And since this is the decreased part where the um, neckline, you will not chain one, you will just turn. And I like to put my yarn around back so it doesn't have that extra thing sticking out on the neckline. So you'll still skip a stitch with no chain one. Come to the end and that's where we'll come back. So at the end of that row, um, come all the way to the end and I would recommend counting that you've done your um, 10 stitches on top right there so that you don't um, get mistaken of how many you're supposed to do. Okay, so chain one, because there's no decreases on this side. And keep going to the end of that row. All right, again, so at the end of this one, this is our third row with decreases at the neckline. And that's all we're going to do. So after this, you're going to make both edges straight. So after this third row of decreases at the neckline, make six rows that go straight up and that will be um, the strap of the dress. So nine rows total, three rows with decreases at the neckline. After you do your ninth row, just cut your yarn off and it's really important that you start the other um, side of your strap facing this way. Don't start at this side and go in this way because then your stitches won't match, you'll really notice. Since you were taking these stitches this way, you need to start right here and continue on this way. So skip five, or you can count in ten, whichever way, but this was about ten single crochet. If you're doing this for a bigger size child, you could just um, fold it in half like this. Mark where you want your straps to be with a pin, and then just make sure they're the same. 
This doesn't have to be exact. I love just being able to eyeball it and, and wing it and just have fun with it. Okay, so right where you've tied your knot, just bring up a loop and chain one. And then continue on. And you can catch this end into what you're doing, meaning that you just go underneath the end right there. And when you take your stitch, the, it, the end is caught up in the stitch, and that just saves you from having to use your yarn needle to weave the end in later. So we will do just like we did on the other side. This side will be straight up for nine rows right here. This side will have three decreases and then six straight up rows, just like this. So three decreases, six straight up rows, and then nine rows straight on the outer edge. And then come back after that's done. So periodically I like to kind of fold on in half the things that I'm working on to make sure that they're matching. And I notice that this side of the um, strap is a little bit smaller than this side, and I want them to match. So I just like to make things up all the time. And so this happens sometimes, you can just make it work. See, I'm going to take an increase right here in the, into the second to last stitch. So if that happens to you, if your count gets off like mine, you can just make it work. You don't have to undo anything. You can just add an extra stitch here, take out an extra stitch there. And I hope that by watching my videos, I'm inspiring you to, to just make up your own things and to have fun with it. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Nobody's going to say, oh, you have 11 stitches right there instead of 10. So continue on after you've added that extra stitch, just, just like normal, for 9 rows. See, that strap turned out okay with that extra stitch. You can't hardly even tell that it goes out a little bit at the edge. So now we're going to um, sew our bodice pieces together. Um, determine which side um, you like the looks of better and put the right sides together in the middle so that you're looking at the wrong side. And if you have your ends hanging out like this, like I still do, you can just tie those together. So right over left, left over right is a square knot. And um, you can take one of these pieces if it's long enough. If not, just grab a new piece of yarn, thread your yarn needle, and put one stitch through the top of, of, each, of each single crochet, just like that. And this is how you will do every edge. You will do the same on this edge. And right here and right here and on these armholes make sure you're only sewing up to the 12th row don't come up here and so just make your knot at the 12th row and then we'll come back all right so now that you have your bodice sewn together the next step is to do the sleeve and um, these sizes up here are just suggestions so make sure um, you fit the sleeve to your child. The best way to do that is once you have the piece crocheted, um, fold it over, sew these little things together, and slip your child's arm through the hole. And um, that's a great way to see if it's going to be comfortable for their arm. So the size I made was right here, the 12 month size. So this is 9 inches by 3 and a half inches. And the best way to do this is to just keep putting your sleeve up to your drawn pattern and making it match your drawn pattern. So I ended up chaining 36 and I did 30, chain 36 by 4 rows. So after you skip your stitch, you know, to make your straight edges, it ended up being um, 35 chains and 4 rows high. And so in order to make it fit the pattern, I had to skip 4 stitches in on, on the right there which I just cut my yarn and I started it again right there. And then on my second row right here, or my first row of the cap sleeve, I ended up skipping two to make it match the drawn pattern. So just keep putting it up to your drawn pattern. And if you want, you can take a screenshot of this and have your print shop enlarge it to these sizes. 
So once you have two of those sewn or crocheted, then we'll come back. After you're done with the sleeve, take the ends and sew them together like this and turn it right side out. Then you're going to want to gather it up just like this so that it fits in your armhole. So take a piece of yarn, maybe two feet long, start right here, and just start going in and out with your yarn every other stitch. And leave, leave an end piece out, maybe about a couple inches long at least, so that you can pull on it. So just in and out with your yarn all the way to here. And then you can just start pulling on it and tightening it so that it gets smaller so it'll fit in your armhole. Mark the exact center with a pin. Have it be right side out. Your bodice is wrong side out so that the inside is the right side. You will stick your sleeve inside with your pin matching your armhole. That makes it so that their right sides are together. Always sew right sides together. And then match your pin right up here with the seam of your shoulder. And then you can see this, this is still a little bit too big. So you'll have to pull, pull your threads up until your armhole matches your sleeve. And then you can start sewing just like you sewed the seams of your bodice. And just start sewing around. And just keep pulling on your gather threads or letting them out depending on how big you need your sleeve to match. And then we'll come back when you've sewn on um, both your sleeves. Once you have your top done, you're ready to sew um, the top to the bottom. And you do that by um, putting a gathering piece of yarn into your skirt and pull it up to uh, match the top right here and uh, make sure that your gathers are all even so that you don't have a lumpy gather someplace and then you will do right sides together I have turned the skirt inside out so this is the wrong side because you can't see the cables uh, or the um, lines and this is right side out so you will stick it inside so that the right sides are touching just like that. And then you will match up with pins. You will pin the side seams to the side seams of your of your skirt, just like that. And then you will sew it on the same way you did the sleeve. After you have it all pinned in and your gathers are even, pin it in at least four places so that the gathers are even and then do a whip stitch all the way around to sew on your top and then we will come back. So now with your um, coordinating color, we're ready to attach um, the little belt. So what I've done is I've tied a knot on the inside and then I've drawn up a loop right at the waist. And you will go down and we will be taking one single crochet through each single crochet on your bodice. So pull up a loop and then pull through. Go right down where you just were, pull through a loop. And it takes a while to get a hold of this, but once you get the hang of it, it'll go fast. You just need to know where to put your stitches. Go right down where you just came out of. Let me pull that down so you can see that better. Go through one stitch. Pull through a loop and do a single crochet. And then that's how you will do your belt all the way around. And you're going through this um, line right as the skirt and the bodice connect right there. Alright, for the little ruffled um, edge on the sleeve, just pull up a loop at your um, seam of your sleeve and make um, a chain and that counts as your first single crochet. And you will be making three single crochet into every stitch around your sleeve. And that's what makes the great little um, ruffle stick out. So come back to the beginning point after you have made 
three single crochet into every stitch. Your three stitches into every one, just join um, your first single crochet and put your next single crochet on top of it. And then do two single crochet into every stitch and that's what will make it real roughly. One, two, so two single crochet into every stitch. When you come back to the beginning, join it with a slip stitch and then hide your ends in the inside with a yarn needle. Okay, to start with, chain two and make five single crochets into this first chain that you did. Next step is to do ten single crochet, working two single crochet into each stitch, but you are only working it into the front loop. So by the end you will have ten single crochet worked only into the front loop of each stitch. So there's my first two and by the time you get back around here there will be ten. So after you've done your ten single crochet do a slip stitch into this front single crochet to join that round. Pull this loop a little taller so that it will reach back to this first loop. Now you still have these five loops on the back and that's where you're going to be doing your 10 single crochet. So put your loop through this first single crochet that you did. And sorry, I'm trying to get a hold of it. This first one's a little backwards it seems like. So just pull your loop through for that first one. And you're going to be doing um, two into each of these loops. If you can see that. One, two, there's the second loop right here. So do one and two. Here's your third loop right here. And keep continuing doing that. There's five loops on the back. Make ten single crochet, two into each one. So I've done all ten of my um, single crochet and this loop that you pulled back to start this row right there does not count as one of your single crochet. So you're going to do ten complete single crochet and um, join it to your first one with a slip stitch. This is when you're going to start making your petals, and again, you're only working into the fronts of the loops only. So do a half double crochet, which is um, yarning over, and then pulling through all three. So do four of those. Okay, that's the fourth one. And in the next stitch, into the front loop only, do a slip stitch. And then there's your first petal. And you will repeat that again into your next stitch. Do four half double crochet. And then into the next stitch, a slip stitch. And repeat that five times until you have five petals. So after your last petal you're going to do kind of like you did on your last round. You can see that you have ten loops here on the back. So you're going to pull this loop a little bit out so it'll reach back to the loops back here. And then into this first loop right here you will make your first um, single crochet. I'm 
And like I said, this first loop is a little backwards, a little awkward. But as long as you get your loop through right there, that's good. So into this first loop, I only want you to make one single crochet. Into every other loop on the back, you're going to make two single crochet for a total of 19 single crochet. You can see that I'm making two into every other single crochet until you have 19 single crochet on the back. Okay, so join with a slip stitch to that loop that you pulled back from your last row. Make that your slip stitch space. So there is 19 single crochet around the back. From now on you'll be working into both loops because we're not going to make another layer of petals and we are doing um, double crochet. So go into your next stitch and make two double crochet. One, two, into your next stitch make two more single crochet. and into your next stitch make a slip stitch and you will be repeating this petal for six times with a slip stitch into your next stitch make two double crochet into your next stitch make two more double crochet in your next stitch make a slip stitch and you will just repeat that and so now I am on my two double crochets into this stitch and keep going until you have six of those petals. So there was one space left after you finished your last petal and just make your slip stitch into that space and then take your yarn needle and pull this thread down that this yarn that you just did right off of that last petal and pull it to the middle and I usually leave a long piece of yarn because I usually sew these flowers onto something and it just makes it easier. And then this is your piece that you started with. You can take a yarn needle and weave this into the back and cut off the ends. And then just kind of fluff up, fluff up your flower, make it look the way you want it to. And there is your finished flower. You have your flower done. Go ahead and sew it to the waistband. And now you're done. This is a very easy care dress. You can put it into the washing machine um, in cold water on gentle cycle and then um, in the dryer put it on low heat for about 20 minutes with a fabric softener sheet and then after that lay it flat to dry just long enough to get the dress nice and soft and then you just lay it flat to dry and I hope you enjoyed making this dress and thanks everyone for coming along and I hope this dress will keep your little girl nice and warm during the cold months bye bye everyone